Good evening everyone and you are watching the Chrissy B show and I'm Chrissy B. Now we live in a very busy world and many times we need to juggle loads of things at once. Now while it's great to have lots to do and it keeps you occupied and it's great to multitask, are we really being effective with our time? And when do we start actually bordering on being workaholics? Well, that's what we'll be discussing on tonight's show. And we have lots of lovely guests as well to discuss this topic, including a singer, songwriter and beatboxer who's going to be performing for us later on in the show. But first of all, we're going to be speaking to the lovely Patricia, who has some news for us. Hello, Patricia. Hi, Grace. How are you, my darling? I am fine. Thank you very much. Good. Good. <laughs> Now you have some news for us, don't you, Patricia? Yes, a variety of mm. different news. So oh, good. First one. As long as it's not depressing news that Lizzie brings. No, no, Oh my no. gosh, Lizzie. You know, sometimes she brings some really shocking news and it's like, oh, it's supposed to be a happy show, but... <laughs> no, they are inspirational. Okay. A couple spend just one pound on their wedding. What? It's true. How can that be? They, they had a the, the party at a barn a next barn. to their house, mm. yes. The minister oh, offered, that oh. offered these services for free and they asked their guests to bring their food. Oh. So it was like a picnic reception and the only thing that she had to pay money for, of course they had to pay money for their license when they yeah, originally got they married, to. right? Mm -hmm. But she spent one pound on her second hand dress. One pound? That's all the cost that she had. And everybody loved it. The guests were saying that this is the best wedding we've ever been to. And she didn't want a, very, a fancy thing. It was only to yeah. prove that you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of pounds. Because according to this, an average wedding dress costs 20,000 <gasps> pounds. My gosh. I thought the average wedding cost 20,000, not the wedding dress. No, from... Yeah, it says here that the bride got a one pound second hand dress. Wow. A far cry from the average 20,000 wedding price tag. Yeah. Maybe that means oh, the, the actual yeah, wedding. The actual wedding. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I heard that the average wedding costs 20,000 20, yeah. pounds. I think, I think a dress will go for a thousand. Yeah, about that. Five, maybe five. I think I hired mine, if I'm not mistaken, and it cost about three or four hundred pounds to hire. Yeah. But I think to buy it, it's about at least the, the a brand minimum new one. is like 500, 500 pounds. I didn't spend that much on my wedding, to be honest because I couldn't afford it at the time. How about you? Did you have a proper like? Yeah, I did. But actually my, my wedding dress was custom made mm. by someone that offered it to me. Oh, so it was nice. kind of a wedding gift. Yeah, yeah. And of course, then I had to pay for all the reception, but all my guests were very generous. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of used the gifts that I received, the monetary gifts that I received to pay off for the reception. Oh, that's nice. It was... Yeah. You don't, you it don't wasn't really, a you don't big, the, fancy shebang. Yeah. But the important thing is that you do marry the person that you love. And that sometimes it puts people, just the sort of the thought of a, a wedding itself, and it's so expensive, it puts people off from even proposing, I think. Doesn't it? Because it must be quite hard. I mean, I think that was a bit too and also, cheap, that wedding. The more expensive the, the wedding is, the more burden it is on the guests as well because then mm. they have to really dress up nicely, their gifts need to be high yeah. and it's more of a, a burden on the guests as well. Yeah. So they oh, I have to go but I have to give this much or I have yeah. to, my, my dress needs to be very expensive because everyone is going to look nice. I don't know if I would have been very happy to go to a wedding where I had to take the food myself because that's something that you kind of look forward to, isn't it? Like you go By the, the looks food. of it, <laughs> it looked like it was in the countryside. Yeah. So in a barn, everybody just brings probably their neighbours and friends, close friends and yeah. close relatives. They're all happy to help. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have a, a good day, a day to remember, and he's the right person, yeah. you have it's fun. True, it's true. Why spend loads and loads of money on it? <laughs> now, an inspirational story. A remorseful thief returns money to store he robbed 12 years ago. <laughs> and he Aww. wrote a note saying, I'm a drug addict. About 11 or 12 years ago, I robbed this store with a gun. Aww. I do not use drugs anymore and I feel I must make amends to the people I have hurt in the Aww. past. I came in your store around, is specific, around 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning in 2002 or 2003 and I got a six pack of beer and asked for cigarettes. When the register opened to, to give change, I pulled out a gun and took around 
$300 from the register, then drove away in a white car. I hope you will accept this money and find forgiveness. Aww. So he gave, he went back to the store 12 years later. Gosh. He gave more than he stole. He stole 300. He gave about 400, I oh, think, okay, back. With interest. With interest. Aww. And a note to apologize for oh, what he so did. Nice. And then Obviously, the, what he did was terrible because that, you know. Especially if you, with a gun. Yeah. yeah. But to actually go back and, and you know, apologise and return the money, I think. As long as it was the same owners, was it the same owners? Because I was... Yes, I think, yeah. I think so. And then the owners, they've put a, the note, they took a photo of the note and they put it on, on the internet. And then they replied back to them saying that, yes, the money is not the issue now, but we're really happy that you overcame oh, your so, problem. Oh, so lovely. So nice when people and are forgive him. And they forgive him. Yeah. They forgive him. And this is a, a massive thing, right? Because yeah. it's a, a robbery at gunpoint. Yeah. But somewhere else, this happened in America. But in England, <laughs> something l little, but I think it's the, this kind of thing need to be promoted and people need to talk about mm. it to then motivate other people to do the same. Because we all hear about crime, robberies, yeah. stabbing, deaths. But what about the good things that people do? Which is why I like to talk have about nice news on this program, yes. right? So, a nurse was at a, at a home. She went to attend one of her, her patients and she left a, a bike chained up outside. When she came back, the bike was gone. So she wrote a note and, sh and she put on the door saying, please return my bike. It is old but loved and will be frightened without its owner. Oh. <laughs> the next day, the patient called and said, look, come back because there's something for you. Uh -huh. They brought her bike back and with a note as well saying, a great big fat sorry <laughs> from the reformed bike thief. <laughs> and, and then he said, I never mistreated it. Oh <laughs> God, it's so, oh, it's so nice. You know, I, like, I love this feel good story. So I think we I need think to we promote more bad. of these. I think people, when, that people that commit crime, most of them, I think, and they're not, it's not, I don't know, maybe they're going through a phase, maybe they're addicted to something and they do, things that they really feel guilty about. For example, there was another show that I used to do and we used to interview like ex-gang members and I used to say, didn't you feel guilty about what you were doing at the time? And they always said they, most of them said that they always felt bad, but sometimes because of peer pressure or things like that, they just felt like they needed to do mm -hmm. it. But they'd always, some of them would go home and cry. Some of them would, would feel really terrible, be depressed and be self-harming. So it, it has an effect on the criminals as well. Not obviously excusing what they do, because obviously nothing justifies it. But the fact is people do feel guilty. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if there's a way that they can make up, I think it's good that they, they do. Because you know it's wrong. Yeah. We all have our conscience and we know yeah. what is right and what is mm -hmm. wrong. And although maybe at the time, if you are with a group of friends, oh, let's just, let's just steal this, it's just for fun. But when you get home and you put your head on your pillow, yeah. I'm sure your conscience tells you you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And then you feel it bad about it. Maybe at the mo in the moment, at the time, you thought, oh, he's fun and let's just do yeah. it. But afterwards, I'm sure it will come back to you. It will it come does, and hunt it you. Because you know it's Have wrong. you ever seen that program? I forgot what it's called. Is it My Name is Earl? I don't know if you've ever seen that. I've Maybe heard he did, about he did it. something wrong in the past and then he goes back and he tries to make amends with everyone that he's wronged before. It's mm -hmm. kind of like similar to that, so. Yeah, we some should. Some things you can't, the thing is some things you can't make up for in reality. You can't make up for it. So it's just better to avoid doing the crime in the first place because mm -hmm. there might not be a chance to sort of say sorry or to make amends. Maybe, you know, people that kill, kill others, it's too late in that moment of anger or anything. So it's better not to do it's it in the first true. place. And then yeah. they have to pay the price yeah of freedom that's right now something else um a little boy had a, a problem in his he started having like feasts of breathless and wheezing mm -hmm. and the doc the parents were worried they took him to the hospital and then they found he had a little lump on his neck this is funny <laughs> But the parents were, were horrified. They were mm -hmm. very worried. The doctors had to do tests. And then the doctor said, he's got a tumor. So they had to remove it. Mm -hmm. But before they do that, they did a biopsy on the, on the little lump. And it turned out to be a peanut. Oh, <laughs> did I get it? <laughs> because oh. the doctor was saying, you know, children just put everything in their, in their mouth. So let's just put a camera through and see what, is, what he has. So he's, how did the lump get, get... When he put the, 
the camera, yeah. he saw there was something in there, but like it was covered with tissue, you know, your, your kind of skin tissue. Uh -huh. uh, and the doctor said they never saw anything <laughs> like this. So when they did a biopsy to test it, it turned it's out to peanut. be a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> and the parents were saying, I, they had no idea how the peanut got there because they never gave peanuts to, to the That's child. That's weird, isn't it? But it must have gone somewhere, someone yeah. else's house, in nursery, I don't know, somewhere. And the peanut just got stuck and then tissue started building up around it. Oh, God. And it looked like it was you a tumour. if you find the lump before you panic, it might be a peanut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to go to a quick break, Richard, okay. but you're going to stay with us with some more news right. after the break well. as well. And to discuss the topic about multitasking and whether it's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to our programme today about multitasking. Just to ask you a question, do you think that men are better at multitasking than women? What do you reckon? Give us a call on 020-7686-6300. Now let me show you this video of a nuts challenge that I did where I had to do lots of different things at once. Let's take a look. Hello everyone and today I'm here with Wayne who's the race director for the Nuts Challenge. Now Wayne, tell us what is the Nuts Challenge first of all? Yeah Chris, it's a um, 7k, 14k, 21k, 28k <laughs> assault course. You're going to be doing <laughs> the uh, middle section which mm. is probably about 1k. And you have a lot of charities coming here as well, don't you? Absolutely. I think we had 60 charities last March and wow. we managed to raise over £100,000 for various charities for that uh, event. Okay, now as you see guys, I didn't bother putting on makeup because I'm going to get very messy. So, you know, I thought, what's the, what's the point of wasting the makeup, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't need it, do but I? I think some of the girls that uh, are doing this with you are going to have a bit of a shock when it comes to makeup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell us about the girls that are coming to. Uh, yeah, they're the crystals that uh, are cheerleaders for the Crystal Palace, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing this to raise money for charity. Okay, All right, so I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm not really sure exactly what to expect, how I'm going to do, but hopefully I'll finish in reasonable time. Time. I think you will. I think uh, 45 minutes is good. <laughs> um, under that 30 minutes is really good, but yeah. uh, 20 minutes is ex exceptional. Let's see how you get on. Okay, let's try the 45. <laughs> let's do the 45, shall we? Give it All a try, right. at least. Yeah, definitely. Good. Ahead, focus on the end. Don't think about what's happening to you in real time, okay? It's the end that matters, okay? Alright, so we're just about to start the challenge now, and I really hope I do well. Oh, buddy! Hey! Scooby! Oh, buddy, buddy! Oh, 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 buddy
Especially Abby, she's really, she's really helping me out, bless her. Where is she? Where is ladies here. You are? Hi, I'm Lulu. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Kate. Hi, I'm Tilly. And we are the cheerleaders. Right, so what are you actually raising money for? You're not just here for fun, are you? No. Today? No, we're all raising money for different charities. I'm raising money for Click Sergeant and I've raised £325. Well done. Uh, both of us were sisters and we've raised uh, 1750 I think. Yeah, Great. I've raised about £350 and it's for the Round uh, Table Children's Wish in Broadway. And would you recommend doing something like this for everyone that wants to raise charity? Definitely. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. amazing. So but yeah. it's challenging as well. Yeah. 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 It actually went faster than what I thought it would. I yeah. think because yeah. originally I was meant to do this on my own, but I joined that, but I kind of gate crashed their thing here. And I'm, they were really encouraging, actually. It's really nice to do as a group, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Team building. Team building. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. thanks a lot, girls. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well guys, I've completed the challenge in quite a good time. Um, it was tiring, but I really, really enjoyed it. And it's amazing what you can do when you actually put your mind to it. I did feel a bit nervous before, but I was told that's quite a good thing to feel a bit nervous because it makes you more aware of your surroundings. So that's really good. I'm also proud of myself because I'm almost twice the age of some of the people that were doing it today. So I kept up and I did it and I've passed the challenge. So woohoo! Okay, so Patricia, what do you reckon? Men or women better at multitasking? Definitely women. Why would you say that? Have you experienced that in your life or is it just things that you've heard? Yeah, I, do, I have experienced it in my life, because especially mothers. Yeah, yeah. Although men are pretty good nowadays. They could be really good fathers, yes. But, you know, the school run, the feeding, the nappy changing, the crying, the waking up at the night all these things and also I've always heard this I don't know if it's true but I've always heard that um, men have this tendency of only thinking about one thing at a time mm -hmm. whilst we women we could be doing something and thinking about what we have, what we have to do next and listening to s someone else talking we could be doing a lot of things at the same time whilst men can't. Yeah. Mm, let's see we've got a caller on the line as well let's see what this person let's has to say. Says. Good evening. Hello. Hello, what's your name? Aaron. Hello, Aaron. How are you? How are you? So what do you reckon? Are you going to tell us that you think men are better multitaskers? Um, I was watching a show on Premier today and they were saying basically that um, a woman can have seven different ideas coming in at the same time, multitask, and a man can only do one. Mm. Seven different... I don't know if I can think about seven different things at once. <laughs> I don't know if I, because I kind of get, for, for example, with myself, 
um, I can't work and listen to music at the same time. I get so distracted. And at other people, they can sort of do both, but I can't for some reason. Are you good at multitasking, Aaron? No, um, usually I like to do one thing at a time. One thing at a time? Yeah. All right, so, so, so it's a point to the ladies then? Yeah. Or two definitely. points with Patricia. All right, thanks very much for your call. Thanks, bye. <laughs> See you. All right, so we're going to be going through some um, like pros and cons of multitasking because we do, I think, let's face it, in today's modern world, we do have to do it. But just, um, just in case any people don't know what multitasking is, <laughs> it's the act of doing multiple things at once. Now, they're saying here it's often encouraged among office workers and students because it's believed that multitasking is more, if much more efficient than focusing on one single thing. But then they're also saying that uh, sometimes it's not a good thing with certain um, subjects, certain things. Say, but if it's like for housework and stuff like that, it's great. But then we're going to talk about where, you know, ways where maybe it's not so efficient. Now let's see some of the, the pros and cons I'll go through with you. Okay, let's see the first one. Now, like we said, it's easy to multitask if you're doing simple chores like cooking and watching TV and talking on the phone. Because most, most, I think most people can do that, can't they? Yeah, I'm not so sure about the cooking. <laughs> because if you're on the phone, you're watching TV, the food is going to get burned. Well, mm. it's, a, it's a lot of things at the same time. Yeah, but, it, but it's also saying, in such case, switching your mental focus from one task to another is easy and does not require much effort. So it's not, just, it's not necessarily about doing things um, at the same time. But maybe, for ex like for example, the same time that you're, you're um, working is the same time you're also speaking on the phone. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But it might mean like for maybe for the five seconds you're doing something and then you switch to something else. It means that is also multitasking. So it's saying it's not, it, normally it's, it's quite good for things like that. Multitasking allows you to include different activities in your daily life. So it breaks the monotony. So imagine if you're doing like the sort of the same thing or the same kind of stuff every single day. It gets boring. So... It helps you to kind of break that routine and be doing something different. Mm -hmm. Agree so far, Patricia? Okay. Uh, yeah, as I said, moving prevents boredom. Multitasking helps you learn how to deal with interruptions and distractions. I need that. It helps you learn. It helps how you to, to, how to, to deal, deal with, with distractions and disruptions when you multitask. Because imagine mm -hmm. you're doing something, obviously you're always going to get interrupted by something or another, aren't you? It's like you said, you're listening to music, but you can't concentrate on something. That's me. <laughs> so if you are a multitasking person, you can listen to music and write an email yeah. and, I don't know, do other things. Like, for example, in the work, my workplace. Now I can't really do that because I have other people working with me. But mm. when everybody leaves, they go home and I stay like an extra hour, then I can put my music on. I have like loads of things on my desk, yeah. things that I need to do. I have like two or three emails open and I'm writing to someone and I'm already thinking, oh, I have to call this person. Mm. So I call the person and I'm still there on the, compu on the computer finishing off the email and I'm still, I still have the music on the background. Yeah. So it, it's, it brings, um, you don't lose focus on what you are doing. Mm -hmm. It's like you were saying, multitasking is not, it's not just about doing a lot of things at the same time. It's about... In, it's in your mind as well. You mm. multitask in your in mind. In your mind, yeah. In that one I do, definitely, because I'm always thinking of different, different sorts of things. But Patricia, we're going to sort of show some cons of mm -hmm. disadvantages of multitasking. And some might surprise you, but it does make a lot of sense. And also we're going to be speaking to someone after the break, a um, psychologist who's going to be telling us what she thinks about multitasking and when, uh, what to do if it gets too much. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to our show all about multitasking and whether it's a good thing or whether multitasking actually slows you down. And I have on the line prof um, Professor, not Professor, sorry, psychologist Jane McCartney. Hello, Jane. Hello. Hi, Hello, you. how are you? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> so thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Now, generally, we think, we tend to think that uh, multitasking is a great thing because you get a lot more done. What do you think? Well, it can 
can be, obviously, you don't want to get overwhelmed with too many tasks. But actually, you know, I think doing more than one thing at a time isn't such a bad thing. I think we're all capable of, of multitasking to a degree or another. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about the, the male-female issue then? Do you think women are generally better? Um, I think uh, maybe a little bit. I, have, I hate to kind of be a bit stereotypical, but I think we're quite used to doing a lot more a lot of the time, whereas mm -hmm. guys can do it, but they don't do it as much, if that makes sense. Yeah. They can multitask, but they don't do it quite as much as, as we do. Or as well as we do. You know, on, on, you know, sort of like on <laughs> just have to put that Not in. Not much as well, but, you know, they don't have the occasion to do it as much as we do. Okay. Now, what, what do you think um, about, what, what do you think multitasking is good for? Because obviously there's some things that will be great to use multitasking with and maybe other things are not so good. Yeah, I think sometimes we do need to focus on one thing. You know, say so if we're doing a piece of work, I'm, you know, I'm writing a book at the moment and, you know, like my multitasking this evening was, you know, doing a couple of uh, paragraphs, going, making dinner, tidying up, stopping the kids from arguing. <laughs> so I'm kind of multitasking all over the place and it's really good to be able to just focus on my writing sometimes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we all need to get things done, so we have to be able to multitask. So that's the important thing as well. Yeah. And what about the thing is as well, Jane, I think sometimes people kind of cross the line and they start to become workaholics as well. When yeah. do you think it, when do you, th why do you think that people get to that stage and how can they maybe prevent themselves from Okay, yeah, I think what that? happens is people, you know, they just get into the, the mindset of, oh, well, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. And actually, you know, one of the things that, you know, in my, you know, reams of multitasking, I've got an ironing basket as big as the Himalayas, really, because I, I'm not doing things like that. So you've got to be able to actually think about what is important, what are your priorities, and do those as well as you can. Mm -hmm. And then other things that maybe can wait are just going to have to wait. So, yeah. you know, there's no point running yourself into the ground because your, your batteries are just going to run out. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, people do, though, don't they? Because they just love to do lots of stuff and they want to sort of to be high achievers and stuff, and they don't know where to kind of stop and draw the line, do they? Yeah, no, no, exactly. But if you, I think everybody's got their own little thermostat, mm. and if you feel that it's actually you're, you know, you're getting, to, you know, you're getting worn out, you're still getting too much, you, and then suddenly, you know, a good indication of this are when suddenly little things, you know, being able to, I don't know, you know, pack the shopping properly in the back of the car or something, suddenly becomes all too much for you. Mm. Then you know it's the little things that are, are starting to indicate that maybe it's the bigger things that need looking at. Yeah, I suppose when you when you get to that stage where you're not enjoying what you're doing anymore, that you're getting stressed yes, and it's yeah, not and fun anymore, you're not really looking forward to it, it's like you start to kind of dread it. No, I suppose exactly. that's when you you know that you need to do something about it. Yes, totally, and that's when you've kind of got to take a little bit of a step back and just think yeah. about what's going on and are there things that maybe you could ask other people to do, are there things that actually maybe don't need doing but mm. you convince themselves, you know, yourself that they need doing. Yeah. And that, that allows you that kind of time to just focus on what is important. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's going to be different things for different people. We can't say, oh, here are 20 tasks that you've got to complete today, pick 10 of them. They're going to be different, for, you know, for, for a, a dozen people. They're all going to be different. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Thank you so much, Jane, for your call. That's it, you're welcome. Advice. Thank you. All right, take care then. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Okay, let's, we've got a few cons of the multitasking here, Patricia, as well. And it's saying, as you know, some things that Jane mentioned as well, studies have shown that multitasking can actually slow down your progress because the act of switching between two tasks takes longer, takes a longer time mentally. So when you begin working on a certain project or a certain chore, uh, your brain decides how each thing is to be done. So switching between tasks actually means closing one and opening another, which is, actually takes more time in the end. So that's quite a different way of, of looking at it, isn't it? But it's like it's she said, sometimes we have to see what our priorities are. And sometimes yeah. we, we want to do everything at the same time, on the same day. And at the end of the day, we end up not doing them as mm. good as we would like yeah. to have. Because we want to do everything at the same. We want to do everything yeah. at the same time. We have a big list of things to do, and mm -hmm. sometimes we could have done them better if we didn't do as much. Yeah, that's right. And also, it says here, when you multitask, your attention is divided between two tasks, which means the quality of work suffers. So when you focus on one task at a time, the quality of work is definitely much higher. And also, <laughs> for the forgetful kind of people. Switching between two tasks also means trying to remind yourself where you left off leading to a waste of time and this might result in decrease in overall productivity. Are you it's forgetful true. person? It's true. No, but <laughs> if I'm doing something, I'm in the middle of something and then I got a call, I had to go somewhere. When I come back, you actually have to stop and say, okay, yeah, where, did I, where did I stop? You have to review everything again. 
until you get to where you left off. That's also saying here, just to add a couple more points, multitasking might keep you busy, but at the end of the day, the question is how much have you accomplished? If it's not much, your management might actually think that there is a drop in your efficiency level. So it's not good in the workplace as well. Maybe you're trying to take on, maybe you want to kind of, you know, it's kind of people that want to impress the boss and they say, oh yeah, give, give me everything, give me everything because, you know, I, I can manage it and I want to do well, but then it looks good that you're doing loads of stuff, but if you're not really uh, bringing the results at the end of the day, that could actually work against you. Mm -hmm. So it's not always a, a great thing to have lots to do. And also it's saying here, your brain, like any other muscle, can get taxed due to multitasking, as Jane was saying as well. So switching between tasks and making multiple decisions might tire your brain to an extent that you might end up being a poor or less effective decision maker. So, you know, like I said, we, when I was speaking to Jane, it, you know, sometimes it's just too much. When you find yourself getting stressed and like things are getting on top of you, then that's a big sign that maybe you've just taken on a bit too much. You find yourself rushing to do everything you have to do mm -hmm. and you don't do them as good as you would yeah. like to do. And you don't, you don't have time. You need to, there will be times where, okay, today I need some time off. Yeah. I need, my brain needs to rest. I need to think about like you said, people take the wrong decisions because they're not thinking properly. Because mm -hmm. they're just rushing they into, are, it's true. into everything. They are, true. decisions and stuff like that. But I think something very, 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 very important is all to bear in mind is that sometimes people have a lot of problems that they're going through and they're trying to kind of solve all these different... So it might be a problem in the marriage, it might be a problem with finances, it might be... And they've got all these different problems and it's like they're trying to shoot at the problems and trying to solve all of them at once. And I think in situations like that, that's not a good thing to try and solve all those problems at once. You've got to kind of sit back and think, where is all this coming from? What is the root of this problem? So for example, mm -hmm. in the case where there's a couple that's arguing and they've got financial problems, money issues, is the problem the marriage or is it because of the stress of, you know, the financial, the finances being in a mess? So once you identify what the root of the problem is, you need, you need, I think you should focus all your energy, all your strength on solving that issue, which is also going to help solve some of maybe the other issues that, that's going on. So in those kind of situations, I, I wouldn't try and solve and do lots of things at the same time. I think it's important to pick one, the one maybe the, maybe the worst problem that you have, the one that's really causing other things to happen in your life, or maybe something like depression, for example, which happens to affect everything in your life at the end of the day. Focus on getting help for that thing first. Put all your strength, all your energy into getting help for that thing first, and then you can talk, you know, think about doing the other thing. So I think in situations like that, it's good to not to multitask, not to try mm -hmm. to. And we will also have a caller on Skype, and this is Paola Cardini, who is currently a design assistant professor. Hello, Paolo. Hello. Can Hello. you hear me well? Hello, everyone. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> It's really nice to have you. So, Paolo, tell us what you think about multitasking and when it's a good thing and when it's not so great. Well, I mean, I can speak from my personal point of view. I, I'm a designer, so um, I used to look around me and I, I, I used to filter all the information I see through my personal filter. And for me, multitasking can be good and evil at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it can be a valid companion, for instance, for me when I'm, I'm involved in a creative activity. It's a really good companion. It helps me to, to lose the track and then to approach the unexpected. So multitasking really helped me to, to look around and to, to active my senses, really. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I think, I really think that there is a moment that is a much more intimate moment where you have to focus and where you have to wrap up everything and, and really fully put yourself in working out concrete solutions. So it's a kind of balance between the two. Did it, did it ever get too much for you, um, for, for you to, like, was there any a, a time that you were doing too much and you thought this is, this is going overboard now that I have to kind of cut things back? Yeah, I mean, there is always a moment in which you feel that you need to cut <laughs> and you need to, to, to really bring everything down to the reality. So, and, and as you can feel this when you are, I mean, I'm a multitasking person. So there is a moment where you really perceive that you need to just cut and concentrate just one problem a time, mm. at a time. At a time, okay. Now also tell us what you think about the male-female issue. Do you think women are better at multitasking than men? 
or the other way around? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I can just say that after my, my, my TED Talks video, I mean, I received immediately a, 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 an email from one of my ex-girlfriend that say, ah, it's easy for you to, to monotask. You always, always said, do that. And, and, and my wife confirmed the stuff. So, I mean, it's totally, yeah, seems like totally men. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Probably men. <laughs> Maybe you're just the exception. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, Paolo, thank well, you so much for know. joining us. I don't know, really. <laughs> I, I don't want to enter in it. All right, okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Paolo, for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. See you. Okay, so also after the break, stay tuned because we have a lovely young lady with us called. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, can I do that bit again? Sorry. some reason I couldn't see the auto kill all of a sudden. Nikia, Dana. Oh, because you put the R in, it confused me. I thought, what does it say? Damn, I know. <laughs> okay, so after the break, stay tuned because we have a lovely young lady with us called Dana McKeon. And she's going to be performing for us. And she's very, very talented because she can actually sing and she can also beatbox. So that's going to be something very different that we're going to have on the show. And we'll also be talking to her about her story on how she started up in the music industry as well. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back, and I have with me on the sofa multi-talented and multitasker Dana McKeon. Hi. Hello, darling. How are Hi. you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. It's wonderful to have you here. Now, you've Cheers. got a real big talent, haven't you? Can you tell the viewers <laughs> what you do exactly? Yeah, okay. So, I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I write songs, I play guitar, and I'm also a beatboxer. Wow. Okay, yeah. so she's going to be giving us a little demo here and try and teach me a little bit as well. I'll probably make a fool of myself, but never mind, I'll try, <laughs> try anything. <laughs> so, tell us, how, how did things start off with you? When did you know you wanted to, to be a performer like this? Um, growing up, I always daydreamed about it. Yeah. I was a standard teenage girl with a hairbrush instead of a microphone singing in front of the mirror. But I never had the courage to do so in public until mm -hmm. I was 19. And there was a university showcase back home mm -hmm. in Malta. And my friends convinced me to take part. And I did. And it was my first performance ever. And I won the, the contest. So wow. then I said, oh, I, I like this. <laughs> and yeah. one thing led to another. And suddenly I developed a huge passion for, for performing mm. and I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. So that was like the first time you had the actual courage to do anything. Yeah. Did you wish you'd started earlier then when you yeah, saw it? Yeah, I really wish <laughs> I had started What was stopping it? was just nerves, maybe you thought yeah, you wouldn't guess, make it? Yeah, lack of confidence mm. and I guess my brothers used to tease me a lot and say, okay. yeah, but that's typical sibling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sibling stuff. So yeah. then you did that first performance, you won. Yeah, and then, and that, then yeah, it was like... I didn't look back. Right. Yeah. So then what, what happened? How did you end up over here in the UK? Um, a year and a half ago, I, after I finished studying at uni, I, I worked for a while, but something kept, like something inside, this voice inside kept telling me, you know, you don't, this is not exactly what you want to be doing. Mm. So I quit my job as a physiotherapist in Malta, which I love doing. Um, yeah, tell us about yeah. that. You, got, you, you were doing quite a few things, weren't you? Yeah, Physiotherapist. Yeah. Um, performer. Performer. Uh, I was on the Maltese uh, national basketball team for a while. <laughs> now, if that's not multitasking, <laughs> tell me what it is. <laughs> See, you yeah. better already. Yeah. yeah, and then trying to fit in um, a social life and, and yeah. family life and everything in between. Gosh. It was quite tough, but okay. yeah. So I you made a decision it. now to focus on the music yeah. and everything. Um, so then... Yeah, I think it's important to prioritize. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a few things kind of helped me make that decision and, and here I am. Was it pursuing. sad to sort of say goodbye a bit to the physio staff and... Yeah, I guess so. After four years at university, yeah. <laughs> kind of studying hard and working hard. I don't, I'm not doing anything to do with the degree that I did at university. <laughs> yeah. I did I'm doing something completely different, but yeah. never mind. Yeah, I guess it's but something... it kind of helps yeah. though. I think it's still, even also going off the subject, but I think it helps just sort of be to be disciplined and stuff like that. So I don't yeah. think degrees are a waste and if you end up doing something <laughs> else, I don't think yeah. so. 
So, but it was a brave move for you to come over here in the yeah. first place. How did your family feel about that and uh, how was it? <laughs> they weren't pro uh, me moving up mm. at first. It was... No parents, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, in Malta, it's such a tight-knit community and your family yeah. is a huge part of your life there. Mm -hmm. So, I'm the only uh, girl. I have two brothers, so they were really sad to see the girl go away because yeah. it, was, it was more of a blow for them, I guess. Uh, but eventually they they came around and now they see that from like from the start I had a few financial difficulties and, and it was yeah. a, quite a big culture shock moving to London but Must be, yeah. now a year and a half later I'm doing so many things that I never thought I would be doing mm -hmm. from performing like all around Europe to huge audiences sometimes and I host a, a radio show, Explosive oh, Unsigned. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's teamed up with the Richard Anderson show uh -huh. now. And oh, wonderful. Yeah, so I'm doing all kinds of things over here, really exciting but stuff. But how, how did you know about the, the beatboxing? How did you kind of get into that particularly? Because that's quite unusual, okay. isn't it? <laughs> how did you know that you could... Yeah, what? it happened because... by accident, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. In Malta, I'd never heard of anyone who beatboxed. It wasn't, it, there isn't a beatbox culture back home. Yeah. But uh, I was just sitting at my desk studying i got bored i used to tap at my desk but yeah. i injured my fingers playing basketball oh. and my, i just kind of needed to let the stress out mm -hmm. and i suddenly just started going <laughs> i was like whoa what was that <laughs> and I, I discovered i could beatbox i didn't know what it was still i, I showed all my friends i said like, guys look what i can do and then but someone, had you seen videos or anything no no nothing. never oh never uh, so i kind of reinvented the wheel oh. <laughs> and then and then one of my friends said they saw something similar on YouTube, so I looked it up and discovered it's called beatboxing, and that's how I got into the I watched your video, community. actually. I thought, oh my gosh, how is she doing that? <laughs> and you were doing these little bits of singing in between yeah, and everything. Yeah. It was yeah. amazing. Thank you. Try and teach us a little bit. Sure, sure. Very sure. basic. Okay. <laughs> what's, what's, the, what's the first so, thing that you would So the basic sounds in beatboxing are... <laughs> so you've got, yeah, you've got the, the <laughs> kick, the kick, which uh -huh. is... So yeah, the letter B, and you just go, yeah, and then at the same time, yeah, that's uh -huh. it. And then the letter T, uh -huh. yeah, so that's your hi hat. And then your snare. There are loads of kinds of snares. I think the easiest one is, yeah. I can't do it. It's coming out right. Alright, you can say the letter K. So. Exactly. And beatboxing! Oh, <laughs> you don't try. So people say you should say the words boots, cats, and boots. put them off to each other. So just don't vocalize it. Exactly. Oh, That's it. <laughs> and then once you get the hang of that, you start adding yeah. a melody to it. So it becomes. Oh my gosh. And you just go on from there. I'm trying to sing at the same time, but it's not coming out. <laughs> Remember I told you before that I'm not that good at multitasking doing two things at once. <laughs> oh God, it's pretty really advanced. So yeah. that. Okay, I'm going I to just... practice at home and then maybe come back another time yeah. and show you on the show what I've done. Awesome. <laughs> so what are your plans for the future, Dana, now? Um, I just, I want to make uh, a living off of music, which I'm doing right now, mm. but I don't want it to become bigger. I want to just do original music and share my music with the world. That's my dream, to okay. go travel the world uh, performing. Wow. And I wish you all the best Thank with you. that. Now, what are you going to be performing for us? I want to sing an original song of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a, a bit of beatboxing on it too. It's a song I wrote uh, about a friend of mine who passed away oh, when okay. I was 16. So, yeah. yeah so it's, it's dedicated to, to yeah. your friend. Yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. Exactly. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming on. I'm Thank looking you. forward Thanks to your for performance. You can go and get ready Cheers. now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the show today and obviously like we said multitasking is great but if it gets if you're doing too many things at once and not concentrating on one thing it can be counterproductive. So by all means multitask for the less important things in life but if you have a goal, if you have something that you really want to go for then it's time I think to make some sacrifices and let go of a few other things that maybe you love to do to be able to achieve your dream. So now we're going to watch um, Dana performing for us. So. See you next time on the Chrissy B Show. She's got a heart of gold and stars in her eyes and she's got a knack for whatever she tries but only she knows why her soul grows with the seeds she sows and I just can't believe that she's falling to pieces She's running out of it now I just thought I'd leave for a moment of peace Even the moment was too much to bear She never climbed up a pedestal Yet she's tumbling down Now there's no hope for this run downtown She sings
Cream filling. Should I take that the way? Yeah. What we're going to do next? Oh, we'll do this straight. <laughs> okay. Just show me the other. <laughs> so now we've made our vanilla buttercream. Three, two, one. So now we've made our vanilla buttercream. We're all ready to split and fill the cakes. <laughs> oh, have you put icing sugar down? No, I didn't. Uh, and yeah. it's stuck. <laughs> Lots of icing sugar. You are going to get it to stick to the bottom and then what? Tell me. Where does my sauce go? Where does my sauce go? Hard work? Yes. <laughs> 